Welcome to this week's Tuesday Talk. Uh, last night, you guys had the annual Lost Creek Invite. Uh, most everybody got a chance to get their first race under their belt this year. Uh, all of you, uh, no matter if you met your expectations, exceeded your expectations, or, or fell a little bit short, uh, hopefully you all learned something from it and you can take away something to uh, help you in, in the upcoming races here the next few weeks. Uh, the big emphasis is that I want to get to on today's talk isn't necessarily about the upcoming meet this week. Uh, that information will be sent out to you today at, at 2.40. Uh, the big thing is the transition that you guys are going to go through here now that school has started. Uh, let's look at that here real quick. And you are entering what I now call the danger zone transition. Uh, we've had an entire summer off uh, you know of school things are pretty easy on you you know you you go to and from cross country for a couple hours a day you may have a summer job uh, but nothing too stressful you should be getting you know plenty of rest and recovery uh, with, without too much hardship here however uh, now that, that school is starting this week you know, that is going to, to consume 35 hours of your week that you previously didn't have to worry about. That adds a new stress to what you're doing. Uh, cross country is you add it all up every week. It's 10 to 15 hours by the time you add up practices and, and going to and from and competing at meets. And so that is another, you know, full work week that, that you're putting in here. Uh, and in this transition from summer to, to fall racing, uh, you know, honestly, how much time did you put in this summer? You know, were you running consistently five days, six days a week, or was it just three days a week? That's going to transition where now everybody's going to be running six days a week. And you add a new element of stress of racing. Racing puts an impact on your body. Uh, you know, demands more of your body than, than a lot of the things we've been doing over the summer where, you know, 80 plus percent uh, of your running was aerobic. Now we're adding 5K stress to your body on a weekly basis. And that's, you know, that transition, if you were only running three, four or five days a week instead of six, and now you're going, you know, a full week of, of running and adding a race into there, that adds an element of stress to your body that you may not be quite ready for. Um, you know, throw in all the other things you have in life. You know, whether you have a part-time job, you're in another activity like dance or band or, or something else. You know, that leaves a little, very little time to, to just be a kid. And so these demands and expectations put on you are, are pretty stressful. Things you just didn't have just a few weeks ago in the summer. Uh, are now kind of compiling and jumping on things. So, you know, as cool as the Top Gun song is, Danger Zone, uh, this thing is a whole lot scarier uh, than some theatrics in a, in a movie. So, big thing is, what can we do? You know, what you choose to do when no one's looking is gonna play a large role in how you turn out uh, these next couple weeks. What happens to you uh, you know, in terms of, of your health and, and well-being uh, during this cross-country season. You know, I, and I, I'm throwing up there a couple examples from last year. The, these guys, uh, it won't matter since, uh, you know, they don't have to be embarrassed by listening to this. But, you know, you, you see Coat and Schaefer, Claire Haru and, and Kovach. Um, they were the ones that did these things, the little things, when no one was looking that paid huge dividends in terms of what they were doing. You know, whether it was Braden having to bike on his own, you know, swim at 6 a.m., you know, throughout the summer uh, in, in the fall, just to stay healthy so he could reach his potential. You know, whether it was Will, and you know, he had a, an arduous work schedule last year, he would get up at five or 6 a.m. during the summer you know, and sneak into the county parks, even though it was illegal, and you know, run with a headlamp and get his work in. You know, every Saturday morning, Claire lives lives in my neighborhood. I would see her out running on days that we didn't meet. You know, to make herself better. And and Renee learning, you know, having during the season having to run on her own to get and reach the goals she wanted to do. 
um, you know, those are big things. You know, everybody gets to see you race and that's fine and dandy, but you can't race well unless you're doing those small things, you know, the, the, the you know, general public doesn't see. So do you wanna be, you know, and have a big season like they did last year? Or do you wanna be a man, I, I wish I would have type, type athlete, you know? So it, it's not the big workouts that are gonna matter, it's being consistent. You have to raise your floor, you have to be consistent, you have to do things over and over and over again. So when you want to be, you know, when you want to peak, when you want to do well, you can touch that ceiling and aim high for, for big goals. So how do you get out of that danger zone? This is a very tricky part of the season where injuries are, are ripe. You start to see people that you know, had a decent summer and now they start to get dings and dents because of all this added extra stress. The big solutions that we have here, one is don't be your worst enemy. Too many people like to get behind, wait to the last minute, are in a constant state of, of catching up never getting ahead, barely treading water, and you have to stop doing that. You have to get out of that procrastination zone. Um, you know, here, now that we're starting school, you guys have 45 to 90 minutes every day outside of the actual class, classes you're in to get your work done. Between Trojan time, and for those of you that have a study hall, don't sit there and play on your phone. Don't sit there and watch TikTok dance videos or, or cats and dogs chasing each other or whatever idiotic things that, that are on there. Do your work. Get that done first. Make school your priority while you're in school. Take care of the, the first situation first. Then, not only does that re, you know, alleviate stress and make things easier once you get home after a, a tough practice, you have more time to rest and recuperate in the evening. Go to bed on time. Hey, if you want to watch ridiculous TikTok videos, be my guest after you get your homework done. But I'm hearing kids year in, year out saying, oh, I didn't start my homework. You know, I was up till 1 a.m. And, and I did this, that, and the other. And I'm like, well, when did you start? And I'm like, well, about 9 or 10 o'clock. Why did you start that late? Because the phones suck. You sat there, you were playing on your phone, you were doing nothing all evening long, and then you decided to start doing your homework. When it comes to running, you have to be doing these other little things. Hydrate. There is no air conditioning in the high school. Most of you sat in your air conditioned homes all summer long, all cool and comfy. Well, that's about to change here real quick during the day. You must bring water. You veterans, you know you can bring water to the high school. This is not the junior high. You must bring a water bottle and not just bring it for decoration, use it. Use it wisely. Go through more water than what you think you need. Very few of you are gonna stay adequately hydrated to be sitting in school all day sweating and then go out to practice and run five, six, seven, eight, nine miles um, when it's 85 degrees out. You have to stay on top of that. So you, you freshmen, you new runners, definitely need to be bringing a water bottle every day. You cannot forget that. That's an, as important, if not more important than bringing your Chromebook. Other things you need to do. You need to eat well and eat enough of it. You know, there is a thing called breakfast um, and breakfast should not cons you know, consist of Timbits and a double chocolate laka frappa crappa mocha bunch of nothing but sugar latte that is not breakfast that is just pouring sugar down your throat um eat a healthy lunch so you're prepared to practice well bring a post-race snack after a, a hard workout so you can eat something it doesn't have to be fancy it can be a peanut butter and jelly sandwich it can be an apple you know something else that's you know not real perishable um, and then eat a well-balanced dinner. You know, if you want snacks and other things like that, that is fine, but make sure you eat real food first and eat real food second, then go after the desserts and things like that. You need to maintain your health and healthy eating is a, is a good first start. 
little things at practice. Instead of once you get done with a workout, instead of sitting there and just stretching your jaw and flapping and talking to people, how about you stretch? You can talk while you're stretching. I swear it can be done. I do it all the time. Foam roll. Do all these other small little things to prevent the injuries and you too can hopefully stay out of the danger zone and have a successful season. Hey, guys, have a good day. Like I said, if you haven't gotten your run in, make sure you get it in now. Talk to you later. Bye.